Hey there! Our good friends from the 808 YouTube channel have just put up a new video on the topic of the fake iPhone 11 Pro. As we all know, the original goes for $999. Meanwhile, the price of the Chinese knockoff is 99 bucks. The fake one looks exactly the same. It's the same color, it's got the signature cutout, and even the menu is the same as on the real thing. These guys are also soon going to be reviewing a Xiaomi Alpha. That's the one with the bent screen on both sides. I highly recommend that you guys subscribe so that you don't miss anything. We'll leave a link to 808's channel in the description down below. Hey there, fellas. Here's a news story for you. So somebody sent us a curious photo. Here it is, check it out. Anyway, fellas, what do we got? We have a car, which is quite obviously fitted with an engine. I've also got a few springs. These are valve springs. They're pretty nice and robust. Now I suggest we take the motor apart, remove the pistons, measure up the length, then we hack the rods, weld on these springs. Yeah, we're gonna put together an experimental motor, which we'll try to fire up. Let's do this. Spring mod for piston rod. Will it work? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. We've slapped the engine back together, we cut out a piece of each rod and welded in a spring instead. The pistons are inside, we've also attached the lower caps to secure the rods to the crankshaft. It's all looking very good. We've yet to attach the sump and the cylinder head. Now just out of sheer curiosity, we want to find out whether the engine will turn over in the first place. I'm keen, how about you? That's enough. It works, which is already a good thing. We had our doubts, I mean, piston rods do tend to lean, right? The crank rotates, so the position of the journal changes together with the angle of the rod. Now, since that spring is softer, we were worried that it'd stretch out or something, but everything seems to work. Okay, time for a full assembly and startup. Okay, we threw it all back together, we've got everything back on, the cylinder head and whatever, it's all good. Awesome! Our first test start. We doing this? What's that horrible noise? That's it, we're done? Sure looks like it. We should spin it the other way. I see you've installed a radiator. Maybe you even filled it up? I think we should remove it so that it doesn't get in the way. Our main goal is to figure out whether the engine will start in the first place. If the engine works, we can always add the radiator back on later. And if it doesn't, well, what's the point of even having it there, if it's just going to get in the way? So let's remove it, turn over the engine. Granted, it even does that. If it doesn't, well, that's the end of that then. That just made things a lot simpler and more convenient. What's up?
I got it to turn the other way. Well, if it turns the other way, I think we should try forward again. What the hell was that? <laughs> what just happened? It's hard to tell. Well, it does rotate the other way. If the crank fell apart, we'd hear the noise. Of course. That clicking noise, is that the springs? The springs are making a weird sound inside the motor. Maybe we damaged the starter motor. You know what? You think that's it? Maybe the ring gear detached from the flywheel. No? Well, it does happen. We are unable to spin up the engine using the starter motor, so we need to find what's causing the problem, and then we'll carry on. Maybe push start it? You think? That's a fucking genius idea, man. So instead of using that starter motor, we might as well give the car a tug. Let her rip, Cyril. Right, we're seated inside the car. We've thrown in some additional load. Plus, I've got Ivan sitting next to me. I'll go ahead and put it into third gear. And then we try carefully... getting it to start. The starter motor let us down. But no worries. We've got a manual transmission, so we don't even need a starter motor. That there's our starter motor. What's the displacement like? Two liters? Three, man. Oh, three. Then it should make easy work of starting this thing. I reckon we wait until we get out onto the pavement, where we'll have a bit more traction. As opposed to the slick surface of our floor. Driving slowly and carefully. Come on, man, give it some gas already. Don't be afraid, dude, just punch it. Move it, come on. Okay, so far... All right, something's happening. Nothing's happening. Oh, come on. What the hell? Really? Oh, wait, I know. What if we try spinning it up in reverse? It's not gonna go in, though. Yeah, we need to stab. Yeah, you're right. There we go. Did you hear it start to rumble? Wait, nope. Damn it. Oh man, we need to be careful. Otherwise, we might smash the sump. The engine ain't rotating. <laughs> oh man, these noises are gonna get everybody to pour out to see what's going down. We should find a place to flip around. It did turn over though. Quite vigorously, even if it didn't fire up. Yeah, it sort of coughed a bit and... Uh, What just happened? I felt a serious jolt in the gearbox. Come on. Come on. Start, William. It ain't having it. Okay, guys, so here's the deal. You saw me dumping the clutch in third gear while we were being towed. I was really hoping that it would spin up at some point. And we did actually reach that point. There were certain moments when the engine was sneezing as if it were finally about to start. It seemed as if we were almost there, but that didn't last long. Now the engine is seized up.
Right, fellows, I'm sure you're all pretty curious as to what happened here. Well, let me tell you, it's just as we thought. Those springs were compressed, stretched out, they got severely twisted, and eventually they broke off. They quite obviously broke off at the weld points, since the springs themselves are made from high carbon steel. Upon overheating, those spots become the weak points, resulting in the springs breaking away from the rods. At the very least, two of them did just that. As for this here, I don't even know what to call it now. Let's just say that it's a connecting rod head. Anyway, it got lodged into the edge of the cylinder. As a result, the motor seized up and we couldn't get it to turn over. That's not taking into account the fact that it did rotate for maybe 5 to 10 seconds, or something along those lines. But soon after that, it seized up completely. That's it, game over. So out of four cylinders, the amount we have left currently... What's amazing is that one cylinder is completely intact. This one didn't get deformed. The spring is still in place. It didn't break off or anything. But that's the only remaining survivor. Apparently this one had the least compression or something. I don't know. I really don't have any way to explain it. So here I am rocking it back and forth. It's all good, the springy connecting rod is doing its thing. Meanwhile, in another cylinder, the piston flipped sideways. Looks like that's the one that got seized up. I can't get it to move even a tiny bit. Not even by a single millimeter. As for the, how do you call it again? That part where we hacked off a piece to weld the spring on, it got lodged into the cylinder wall and seized up the entire engine. And there you have it. That's the end of that story. What can I say here, fellows? This was one tremendous experiment. To put it simply, this doesn't work. And it actually wasn't supposed to. If you decide to weld up something similar, just use it as a wall ornament in your garage. And that's all I have for you. Big thanks for watching. Now you keep doing that. Subscribe to the channel. Send in your comments and suggestions. Give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.